The term processor is frequently used in the computing field to refer to the central processing unit, or CPU. Although the CPU is the most common processor, it's not the only processing unit available to data centers. There are TPUs, GPUs, DPUs, and the new QPUs. To know what each one does and why they're necessary, then watch this video till the end. Hello and welcome back to Quantumfy. In today's video, we'll see the difference between CPU, GPU, DPU, TPU, and QPU. So let's get started. CPU. Consider the CPU to be your computer's commander. A CPU is made up of two major components, an arithmetic logic unit and a control unit. An ALU is capable of performing arithmetic and logic operations. The control unit directs the ALU, memory, and input and output functions, instructing them on how to respond to the program that was just received from memory. The best approach to keep track of what the CPU performs is to consider it an input and output flow. The CPU will accept the request, examine memory for instructions on how to complete the task, delegate execution to either its own ALUs or another specialized processor, bring all of that data back to its control unit, and then perform a single unified operation. CPUs have become more powerful as we've progressed from single core to multi-core processors. Essentially, numerous ALUs execute tasks that are managed by the CPU's control unit, and they do so in parallel. That is, it works best in conjunction with specialist AI processors, such as GPUs. GPU GPUs began as specialist graphics processors and are frequently confused with graphics cards, which have a bit more hardware. GPUs were created to allow enormous quantities of parallel computing, and they work in combination with CPUs, either fully integrated on the main motherboard or on their own separate piece of hardware for heavier loads. They also consume a lot of energy, and so produce heat. GPUs have long been utilized in gaming, but it wasn't until the 2000s that they became popular in ordinary computing, owing to NVIDIA. Of course, NVIDIA designs hardware, but they also invented CUDA, a proprietary framework that gives programmers direct access to a GPU's virtual instruction set and parallel computing units. This means you can set up compute kernels or clusters of processors that operate together and are well suited to specific tasks without putting the rest of your resources under strain. This made GPUs extremely useful for machine learning tasks, and they profited from leveraging existing well-known methods. That is to say, when studying ideas, the answer that wins is not always the best one based just on implementation. Adoption will be difficult if you introduce something that involves fundamentally changing customer behavior or requiring everyone to relearn a skill. As a result, GPUs that work well with current systems, programming languages, and so on helped in widespread adoption. They aren't really plug and play, but you get the idea. With the course of time, there are now open source platforms that support GPUs that are supported by major industry companies. The most important of these is OpenCL. TPU it's Google's in-house AI processor. They began utilizing them in their own data centers in 2015, introduced them to the public in 2016, and certain commercial models are now available. They're powered by ASICs and Google's TensorFlow software. They're explicitly engineered to have slightly lower precision than GPUs, which makes sense given that this makes them more adaptable to different sorts of workloads. GPUs, on the other hand, were originally designed for graphics processing and rendering, which rely on each point's relationship to each other to create a readable image. If those points have less accuracy, you amplify that in their vectors and you end up with PlayStation 2 Spyro instead of PlayStation 4 Spyro. Another significant design choice that distinguishes TPUs from CPUs and GPUs is that they are built around a stylistic array. Stylistic arrays construct a network of processors that each compute a portion of a task before passing it on to the next node in line until you reach the end of the line. Each node is normally fixed and identical, but the program that runs between them can be customized. It's known as a data processing unit. DPU DPUs, which specialize in data center movement, are a new form of programmable processor that joins CPUs and GPUs as one of computing's three pillars. Originally, the CPU was the key component of personal computers with a single processing core. The CPU has grown over time, the GPU has begun to tackle increasingly complicated computing tasks, and a new computing pillar has emerged in the data processing unit. The DPU relieves the CPU of networking and communication responsibilities. To tackle data-centric tasks at scale, it combines processor cores with hardware accelerators 
accelerator blocks and a high-performance network interface. This architectural approach allows the DPU to ensure that the right data gets to the right place in the right format as rapidly as possible. The DPU is primarily intended to process data as it moves across the data center. It focuses on data transfer, data minimization, data security, data analytics, and encryption and compression. This implies it allows for more efficient data storage and frees up CPU resources for application processing. When placed at the heart of data-centric architecture, a DPU can also solve server node inefficiencies. It can reduce sprawl, provide high availability and dependability, and assure data accessibility and shareability regardless of how much data needs to be processed and transferred. DPU processing is intended for use cases requiring large-scale data processing, such as data centers serving cloud environments or supercomputers powering complicated AI, ML, and deep learning algorithms. Before jumping into QPUs, let's look into some existing and important units. So let's learn about VPU. A vision processing unit is a sort of microprocessor that's designed to speed up machine vision activities. It's a form of AI accelerator that's designed to accelerate machine learning and artificial intelligence technology. VPUs are utilized in a wide range of applications, such as computer vision, picture identification, and object detection. VPUs differ from video processing units in that they can perform machine vision algorithms, such as CNN, SIFT, and others. They may incorporate direct cameras connections and a stronger emphasis on on-chip data flow between multiple parallel execution units with scratch pad memory, similar to many core DSP. The Intel Movidus VPU, for example, allows demanding computer vision and AI tasks with efficiency. Movidus VPUs achieve a mix of power efficiency and compute performance by combining highly parallel programmable computing with workload-specific AI hardware acceleration in a unique design that reduces data transmission. APU an APU is a form of artificial intelligence accelerator that concentrates on identification tasks. It's intended to find patterns in massive volumes of data. The Gemini APU from GSI Technology takes associative memory to a new degree of flexibility and programmability. APUs are analogous to associative memories or tenorary content addressable memories, but they're more flexible and programmable. They're capable of masking operations as well as working with variable length words and comparisons. The APU APU employs a similar mechanism that mixes computation with memory words. Tenerary content addressable memory is a form of content addressable memory that may simultaneously store and search for data based on its content rather than its memory address. Associative memory is another name for CAM. TCAMs are similar to CAMs in that they can store and search for data in three different states, 0, 1, and X. TCAMs are utilized in networking devices to accelerate forwarding database and routing table operations. Associative memory of this type is also employed in cache memory. Both the address and the content are stored side by side in associative cache memory. When the addresses match, the matching content from cache memory is retrieved. Content addressable memory is a sort of computer memory that's employed in certain extremely fast searching applications. It compares input search data to a table of stored data and returns the address of matched data. It's it's also known as associative memory or associative storage. Unlike ordinary computer memory, which requires the user to supply a memory address and the RAM to return the data word stored at that address, a CAM requires the user to supply a data word, and the CAM searches its whole memory to check whether that data word is stored anywhere in it. If the data word is discovered, the CAM gives a list of one or more storage addresses where it was discovered. CAM is commonly used in networking devices to accelerate forwarding database and routing table operations. Associative memory of this type is also employed in cache memory. Both the address and the content are stored side by side in associative cache memory. QPU Similarly to how GPUs and DPUs enable accelerated computing today, they are also assisting a new type of semiconductor, the QPU, in realizing the promise of quantum computing. A quantum processing unit may look and feel remarkably similar to a graphics or data processing unit in your palm. They're all typically chips or modules with many chips, but the QPU is a totally distinct beast under the hood. A QPU, also known as a quantum processor, is the brain of a quantum computer that harnesses the behavior of particles 
particles, such as electrons or photons, to perform certain types of calculations significantly quicker than traditional computer processes. QPUs rely on phenomena such as superposition and the ability of a particle to be in several states at the same time, as described in quantum mechanics, a relatively recent branch of physics. CPUs, GPUs, and DPUs, on the other hand, all apply classical physics ideas to electrical currents. That is why today's systems are referred to as classical computers. QPUs have the potential to revolutionize encryption, quantum simulations, and machine learning, as well as tackle difficult optimization problems. CPUs and GPUs work in bits, which are the on and off states of electrical current that represent zero and ones. QPUs, on the other hand, derive their unique ability from calculating qubits, which are quantum bits that may represent a wide range of quantum states. A qubit is a computer scientist's abstraction for expressing data based on the quantum state of a particle in a QPU. Qubits, like clock hands, point to quantum states that are like points in a sphere of possibilities. The number of qubits in a QPU is frequently used to indicate its power. Researchers are working on new techniques to test and measure a QPU's overall performance. Creating a Qubit Corporations and academic researchers use a wide range of approaches to manufacture the qubits inside a QPU. A superconducting qubit is the most prevalent technique these days. It's composed of one or more microscopic metallic sandwiches known as Josephine junctions, when which electrons tunnel through an insulating layer between two superconducting material. Currently, more than 100 of these junctions can be combined into a single QPU. This method of quantum computing isolates electrons by freezing them to temperatures near absolute zero with powerful refrigerators that resemble high-tech chandeliers. What amazing things QPU can do. Researchers anticipate that the QPUs inside quantum computers will produce spectacular outcomes to the complicated science technology. They're particularly excited about four intriguing prospects. For starters, they might take computer security to an entirely new level. Quantum computers are capable of quickly factoring large numbers, which is a critical function in encryption. That implies they can bypass today's security procedures while also developing new, far more powerful ones. Furthermore, QPUs are well suited to mimicking the quantum physics of how things work at the atomic level. This might lead to fundamental advancements in chemistry and materials science, triggering cascading consequences in everything from lighter airplane design to more effective pharmaceuticals. In addition, researchers expect that quantum processors will address optimization issues that classical computers cannot handle in domains such as finance and logistics. Finally, they can contribute to the advancement of machine learning. QPUs cannot come soon enough for quantum scientists. On the hardware level, QPUs are not yet powerful or reliable enough to handle the majority of real-world tasks. However, early QPUs are beginning to produce useful findings for researchers, particularly in initiatives investigating how to create stronger QPUs and develop quantum algorithms. Researchers are using prototype systems made available by firms like Amazon, IBM, IonQ, Rigetti, Xanadu, and other. Governments around the world are beginning to recognize the technology's possibilities, and they're making major expenditures to develop larger and more ambitious networks. So this was it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, then like and share the video and subscribe to Get Quantumfied. Stay tuned and we'll be back soon with another important video. Till then, keep watching Quantumfy.